history of NWA TNA impact. Well, not quite impact. Asylum years. Part two. More X division. The vlog. The podcast, etc. It wasn't just AJ Styles, Loki, and Jerry Lynn. There was, of course, psychosis in that first elimination double match. But they didn't even start with the X Division. They had those three AJ Styles, Loki, and Jerry Lynn versus the Flying Elvises, Jimmy Yang, Jimmy Yang, Harry Estrada. Sonny Siaki, they had David Young, they had Amazing Red. Amazing Red had those phenomenal years. He had a phenomenal year in, Amazing, in uh, ROH. After that knee injury, he started to decline, but he had some phenomenal years. Um, he had a great match against Samoa Joe later on, you know, like 2009. He just styles and Amazing Red tagged, I think, then... AJ Styles, Jerry Lynn, and Amazing Red, they all tagged with each other. They worked together at completely well. We'll be interesting with Loki vs. Triple X. Never advertised like Loki, Triple X vs. AJ and Lynn and Red, which could have been a big deal. Red was all, often tagged with SATs, or he'd be in like five ways with SATs, trying to pick a spot. They didn't have a CZW partner. Brian XL there also. There's Shark Boy, there's Jason Cross. Everyone on YouTube I know who recently watched the uh, Jason Cross match loves Jason Cross because he has the shooting star uh, leg drop. Crossfire. He never really had much of a personality, but he did. He never. I don't know. He, he was never on the mic for me to figure it out. He probably did well in NWA, but like I don't really know otherwise. Um, I'm trying to figure out who else was. They never had Kid Romeo, even though they had Elix Skipper in TNA. I don't know when Elix Skipper joined TNA. He wasn't there right away. I think he used to be like a job or probably like Triple X. They had. The mentor for CM Punk, I forgot his name, A Steel. This is some model matches. Uh, very fast paced. I like them more than the cruiserweights, especially by the time of the end of WCW. Maybe in the beginning of WCW, I prefer the star power of those cruiserweights, but not so much now. Near the end. My X Division was really good. The X Division now, they have some stars, Max the Dolls there, but like, I don't know, it doesn't feel the same. I don't feel like the wrestlers is going for their all. I don't know what else I can say about the X Division wrestling, Matt, storyline wise. I don't know what else went on storyline wise. They didn't have like the Jay Lethal and Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay Dutt, when did he join? I think he was there that early. They could probably bring back Amazing Red to Impact. I don't see why not. Give him the world title. Same with Christopher Daniels. Same with Loki. I don't know. Like, in the Attitude Era and the 90s, you, you got, like, no memory for, like, wrestling storylines and stuff. If you watch WWE now, they don't really watch it memorizing WWE storylines. So Impact, I'm not so sure if they do or don't. But at least they can mention the history with the commentators and stuff. It was a five ways, six ways. Not so many ladder matches. They didn't introduce Ultimate X till Fox Sports. Don Callis.
covered about everything. Frankie Kazarian. Yeah, Frankie Kazarian and Paul London and Chris Saban near the end of the first year. Chris Saban had that phenomenal match with Paul London. And I'm surprised Paul London was never... Paul London did so well in WWE, I guess he was never brought back to TNA. Although they could use him now. Never had Spanky and Paul London versus Chris Saban and the Morrison Machine Guns. Actually, he's retired now. P.D. Williams didn't enjoy until, like, second year. Chris Haven was given this monster push, and then he got the world title later on in his career, and then they sort of forgot about him. They didn't pay him. How much were they possibly paying him that they didn't want to pay him? It was very really weird. Surprised he's not taking with Kushida now. Chris Haven had some big ones later on with, like, the X Division. X Division. The X Cup. Super X Cup. The Wald X Cup. It was the first one of the Super X Cup. He's been in the most Ultimate X's. I started in like the first year. Pretty amazing that they actually had AJ Styles face off against Jeff Jarrett. It was basically like Booker T facing off against Jeff Jarrett. Um, super serious. I don't know if they followed up on it. I don't know if Booker T, if they kept going in WCW, would he have lowered down and not be in the world of event anymore like uh, what they did with Lex Luger for no reason or Mr. Perfect. He did that basically in TNA where after he won that title, they put him back in the X Division where he certainly didn't belong anymore and then they put him back in the heavy division. Trap Boy did not do the Sharp Boy said so thing till much later. The Dudleys weren't there. I forgot much of this. I think Abyss was pretty much there the first asylum year. Brought in with with uh, Roger Security versus AJ Styles and J with Jared. That was a great feud. That AJ Styles looking very good with the heavyweights thanks to Abyss. I forgot one Chris Saban picked up Abyss. Without being able to, that was Fox Sports, so that was the second year. Um, At least he's, I don't think you were ever in Fox Sports, um, Frankie Kazarian. He started his feuds with Chris Saban, and those were pretty, those were okay, man. Those were one of the greatest. They were like five-star AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe versus Chris Daniel Manners, but they got, got him introduced into the, the show, the program, the company. They didn't do much mic work, but they're pretty good. Same so were always like, few, like, cheat, and that was mainly Toad Futine, whatever it was, right? Mortimer Plumtree, I got, as a fan, I was like, oh wow, he's like the heel manager for AJ Styles, but I don't know if it works, but he actually fit AJ Styles. Did he really work? It was just a manager there, it was like, oh, it's like the genius and he's like helping the guy achieve, but otherwise I don't know if he's memorable. AJ Styles matches versus Sandman and Raven were great. AJ Styles, Sandman, Raven, Abyss, all those matches really brought him out to all. Really made AJ Styles who he was in DNA. I'm surprised they never put the world title on Sandman, put on Raven. Sa Sandman versus Raven for the world title would be interesting.
I don't think Age of Styles 3 will kick cash till second year. It's all that comes in mind at the moment. Where are thoughts that come spread? 